All right, guys, now let's look at lesson six, which is naming ionic compounds. So in chemistry, we use the IUPAC name. That's how you pronounce that. And it stands for the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists. Basically, these are the people that were given the notion and were given the credit for coming up with this naming system. So that's why it's going to be called the IUPAC um, naming system. This is the only kind of naming system that we're going to use in this class. So, and make sure that you practice. And if you have questions, you come talk to me as soon as possible because naming compounds is something that's going to carry through through the rest of the year. So let's look at, there's three main rules for naming compounds. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to name the metal first, which is going to be your positive ion. And that's because it's the most electronegative, it's the least electronegative, excuse me. The metal is the least electronegative, and it's going to be written down first when we write our formula. So that's why we're going to name it first. Then you're going to write the first syllable of the negative element, or the nonmetal. And then you're going to add IDE to the end. And then those are for regular metal, nonmetals. If it comes where you have a metal with a polyatomic anion, then those are pretty easy. You're going to use the exact name right off the chart of table E in your reference packet. So the easiest way to explain this is to do some practice problems. So let's look. We have this compound, LIBR. Okay, LI off your periodic table is lithium. So you write lithium, the whole thing out first. Then BR is bromine. But based on our rules from the slide before, we said we write down the first syllable of the element bromine, which is brome, and then we add IDE to the ending. So LIBR is the formula for the compound lithium bromide. Let's look at an example with a polyatomic ion. How do I know it's a polyatomic ion? because I have this SO4 here, and I have two capital letters next to each other. That normally indicates that you have a polyatomic ion. So again, we're going to name the metal first, which is Na, and we all know that that is sodium. And then we're going to look on this chart for SO4. And we're going to keep looking, keep looking. Oh, we found it. So that's sulfate, that's the sulfate ion. So when we name this, very easily we do sodium sulfate. Polyatomic ions, once you get the hang of them, are one of the easiest things to name. Now, what if we have a metal that has more than one oxidation state? And this is going to happen when we come up with the metals that are in groups 3 through 12 on our periodic table. So the first thing you need to do is you're going to have to determine what the charge on the metal ion is. And in order to do that, we're going to do what we would call a reverse crisscross. So that what we're going to do is we determine the charge of the metal ion first. Then we're going to indicate the oxidation state of that metal ion with a Roman numeral. And then we're going to put that Roman numeral or that charge in parentheses after the metal ion. So let's look at an example. Let's look at CuCl2. Cu is in group 11, so it's a transition metal. And notice it could either be plus one or plus two oxidation state. The way to do this is the uncrisscross. So remember, this two right here came from up here. And so when we uncrisscross, this two is going to now become the charge of the copper. And the imaginary one down here that we never write in chemistry is going to be the charge of the chloride. So this is going to have an oxidation state of plus 2. So when we write our formula, it'll be copper, because Cu stands for copper, 2, because when we uncrisscross, this 2 ends up being the charge of the copper, and then chlor, which is the first syllable for chlorine, and then IDE at the end. So CuCl2 is the formula for copper 2 chloride. Now let's look at some practice. First practice I want to do is let's practice naming K2O. Pause your video, try and do this on your own, and then unpause it when you are finished.
Great, welcome back. Now, what did you come up with? We have a metal bonded to a nonmetal. This two, if we're to uncrisscross, we would have K stands for potassium and O stands for oxygen. We're going to write the first syllable down for oxygen, which is ox, and then we're going to add IDE. So it's going to end up being potassium for K and then oxide. So K2O, the formula for that is potassium oxide. Let's look at another practice problem. How about this one? CABR2. Pause the video. Try this on your own. And when you're finished, unpause it. Welcome back. What did you come up with? CA is your metal. So that's going to be calcium. BR is bromine. Remember, we write the first syllable of the negative ion first and then add IDE. So the name of CABR2 is calcium bromide. Let's look at another practice. What about COCl3? Pause your video. Try this one on your own, and then we'll check this one in a minute. Great, well, welcome back. CO is a transition metal. It's cobalt, and we have to figure out what charge cobalt is because cobalt, based on your periodic table, can have a couple of different charges. So what do we do? We uncrisscross. So this three is actually the charge of the cobalt. So in this case, we are looking at cobalt three chloride. Cl stands for chlorine. Remember, you write the first syllable of your negative ion. So that's chlor, and then you end it with IDE. Check your understanding. We're going to go over this one in class. Name the following substance, NH4Cl. And then also, I want you to write the name of the formula given if we gave the name. So zinc oxide, what would be that formula? Let's see if we can figure this out. And then iron to chloride. Well, zinc oxide, you would have Zn with a two charge and O with a minus two charge. And then you would get ZnO. Iron to chloride, you would have Fe with a plus two charge. The chloride ion is Cl minus one. So when we crisscross these, we get FeCl2. So let's practice writing this formula. We have calcium oxide. Pause the video and unpause it when you're finished. All right, what did you come up with? Calcium is plus two, oxide is minus two, so you should have came up with the formula CaO. I will go over this in more detail in class tomorrow. So check your understanding too. Write the formula given the name copper one bromide. We're gonna check this one in class tomorrow as well. 